Hi everyone, welcome to Farsight Weekly for September 9th, 2024. I am Courtney Brown, Director of Farsight, where we study the subject of remote viewing, widely applied, where all data are collected under totally blind and scientifically defensible conditions. So let's dive in. A lot can happen in a week. First, we have just released our major project on Michael Herrera, a U.S. Marine who witnessed a UAP or UFO in 2009 in the jungles of Indonesia. Well, it turns out that that UAP was involved in a human trafficking operation during the aftermath of a major disaster, an earthquake, and the resulting tsunami. Now, I first heard about Michael Herrera when he appeared on the Sean Ryan podcast. If you have not yet seen our remote viewing project on it, it really is worth seeing. We wanted to find out if what he reported really happened. And wow, did we find out. Our report independently corroborates basically his entire story. Plus, we found out more, much more. So if you really want to understand some of what is really going on behind the scenes, stuff you never get on the mainstream news, watch that report. It is out now on farsightprime.com. Michael Herrera's Jungle Encounter. Also, our next Earth Mysteries project is sure to be a crowd favorite. It will be out in about a week. And the topic of that great project is the Moai of Easter Island, an island of Eastern Polynesia. You heard right. The Moai of Easter Island are these huge rock statues. They are all over the place. They were quarried from volcanic rock and then moved into all sorts of locations. Some of them weigh over 80 tons, and no one knows how they were constructed or transported to all of their various locations around the island. But at Farsight, we now know how it was all done, and you are also going to know in about a week, in the middle of September. Hold on tight. It is amazing, and as I said, this will certainly be a crowd favorite. The Moai of Easter Island, only on farsightprime.com. We also have big news regarding our deep news project. As you know, we have published major investigations on efforts that both the Russian and Chinese governments have been making to influence the U.S. elections. Now, most people think that their efforts focus on hacking into the voting machines and other computer hacking stuff. But in our deep news project, we found out that their major efforts were much more sophisticated, and they targeted lower-level political activity as well, using people who were carefully placed within campaigns and government, such as campaigns for governors. Well. The big news this past week is that the U.S. Justice Department announced arrests on exactly that. First, there was the arrest of Linda Sun, former aide to New York Governor Kathy Hochul. According to the charges, Linda Sun was working for the government of China to advance China's interests in New York state policies. And this even included efforts to interfere with the governor's ability to meet with officials from Taiwan. It was a major story this past week. Then, on the Russian side, the Department of Justice alleged that a Russian-funded media company was set up to send money to various political commentators so that they would dish out information and content that Russia favored. Now, the report seemed to suggest that the information that they were supporting favored Donald Trump. However, to give you an idea of how closely the Kremlin listens to what is happening in the U.S. presidential election, immediately after this report was issued by the Department of Justice, Vladimir Putin stated that he favored Kamala Harris to win the presidency. Undoubtedly, this was an effort to counter the narrative that Russia was favoring Donald Trump. Now, let's be clear about this. At Farsight, we are totally neutral politically. We see positives and negatives for all political candidates, and we definitely do not favor one candidate over the other. The only thing we like to do is to send our remote viewers into situations in which they get political information under totally blind conditions. You don't get blind information gathering from any other news source. Always the mainstream news has serious political biases, and it is essentially impossible to get neutral and objective information from any mainstream news outlet. But at Farsight, 
All of our deep news reports are collected with our remote viewers acting as blind news reporters, trained to a high level with an unusual information gathering technique. So if you want totally neutral news about politics, you can't get better than Farsight in our deep news project. So that was great feedback regarding both Russian and Chinese efforts to influence American politics. We hit it spot on. It was a great week for very specific feedback. Keep watching our regular deep news releases on both YouTube and ForesightPrime.com. Now, each week, we try to have a message from one of our remote viewers. Here is Intisam, who is answering questions in our Farsight forums on ForesightPrime.com in September. Hi everyone, I'm Intisam and I'm excited to share that I'll be spending the entire month of September in the Farsight Forum answering your questions. For those of you who might be new or just starting your journey with remote viewing, the Farsight Forum is a space dedicated to remote viewing, a practice that allows individuals to perceive or see distant locations or events beyond their ordinary senses. Whether you're already deeply involved in the community or just curious about how it works, this is a great opportunity to learn and share insights and expand your understanding. So what can you expect this month? I'll be checking in regularly to answer questions, offer guidance, and contribute to discussions. This is an open invitation for you to ask anything related to remote viewing, whether it's about techniques, experiences, or the history of the practice itself. I'm here to help foster a space where we can all grow and exchange knowledge. Now, I do wanna make one quick request to make sure everyone gets a chance to participate and receive thoughtful responses. I kindly ask that you limit your questions to one per person. This will help me keep the flow of the conversation manageable and allow me to focus more deeply on each inquiry. I'll do my best to provide detailed and useful answers, but with a volume of questions that might come in, this guideline will ensure that everyone gets their time and attention. When you post your questions, I encourage you to really think about what you want to know most. Remote viewing is a vast and fascinating subject. So whether you're curious about techniques for improving your own remote viewing sessions, have questions about specific protocols or experiences, or even want to know more about the theoretical or scientific aspects of remote viewing, feel free to ask. Remember that this forum is a space for all kinds of remote viewing discussions. So the more your question can dive into that topic, the better our conversation will be. Throughout September, I plan to offer responses that can spark further discussion and exploration. If you're interested in the intersection of remote viewing or, and personal development or how remote viewing has been applied in those different fields, those are topics I would love to dive into. You might be wondering how remote viewing can help expand your awareness, improve intuitive skills, or even provide practical insights into real world situations. These are just some of the areas we can explore together. So let's talk about the kind of questions that are ideal for this space. Since the forum focuses on remote viewing, it's best to keep your questions centered on that. Whether you're looking for help troubleshooting a session or you want to know more about what's possible with remote viewing, I'm open to a range of inquiries, but they should always tie back to the core focus of remote viewing. This keeps our discussions relevant, focused, and valuable for the whole community. Here are a few examples of the type of questions that would be great to explore. So what are some tips for maintaining focus during a remote viewing session? How can I better interpret the impressions I get during a remote viewing session? What role does intention play in the remote viewing accuracy? Can remote viewing be used to gain insight into historical events or future possibilities? On the flip side, if your question ventures too far from the core topic of remote viewing, it might not be the best fit for this space. But don't worry, I'm sure you'll have plenty of ideas and curiosities that align perfectly with what we're discussing here. Lastly, I want to emphasize how much I'm looking forward to engaging with each of you. It's not every day that we get to have such focused, in-depth discussion on a topic like remote viewing, so I encourage you to really take advantage of this time. I'm here to help, share insights, and be part of this growing community. Remote viewing is such a practice that can continually evolve and we can all learn something new from each other. So whether you're just starting out or have been practicing for years, your perspective matters and I'm eager to hear from you. To wrap things up, I hope that this month will be an enriching and educational experience for everyone. Thank you in advance for your thoughtful questions, for participating and for helping to make this community thrive. Let's make September a month of discovery and deeper understanding. I'll see you in the forums and I can't wait to begin this journey with all of you. Remember, 
one question per person and make it remote viewing related. And let's dive into this fascinating world together. See you there. And for other news, we just released a new SQL Plus forecast for three cryptocurrencies where we focus on adoption. Our SQL Plus project has been really interesting because we have been using remote viewing to gain insight into cryptocurrencies that appear to survive and thrive into the future. And a general result seems to be that those currencies that support specific activities in targeted social and business areas do the best. The cryptocurrencies that seem weakest seem to be those currencies that are simply currencies, in the way that Bitcoin and Ethereum are general use currencies. There does not seem to be much of a reason to have an increasing number of general use cryptocurrencies. So when a group or company launches a new cryptocurrency that supports a very specific business or social activity using blockchain technology, then the user base for that cryptocurrency has a reason to adopt and support that currency. One of the key interests is in how big that business or social activity is, such that the cryptocurrency finds an active and expanding user base. Cryptocurrencies with such an active and expanding user base seem to be much better situated going into the future. Well, you can find more information about our SQL Plus project on our website, farsight.org. We publish our SQL Plus forecasts for free on YouTube, and those who are interested in purchasing the identities of those currencies can do so on our website, farsight.org. And as always, I must remind everyone that no one at Farsight is a licensed financial advisor. We do our forecasts for educational and entertainment purposes only. Our forecasts focus on the adoption of currencies by a user base, not price. The adoption of a currency is what will change things in the future for this planet, and we are interested in how our planetary society evolves. So for us, it is interesting to know which cryptocurrencies are likely to survive and thrive in the future, and it is equally interesting for us to see which currencies are likely to fail. There are literally thousands of cryptocurrencies out there, and the vast majority of them will simply fail, and the investors will lose everything. But some will survive and thrive, and early investors have the possibility of making great returns if they obtain some of those currencies when they are cheap. Our SQL Plus project is an attempt to use remote viewing to gain insight into that process. And on an educational and entertainment level, it is fascinating. Our SQL Plus forecasts are typically for five years, and we will continue to publish our SQL Plus forecasts through the end of 2024. Moving on. Last month, we released our first recording of our ET board meetings. Now, we are totally transparent at Farsight, so we want people to know that we have been getting guidance from friendly extraterrestrials for a very long time. And we feel it is important for everyone to witness us getting this guidance. If you can get past the issue of whether or not the extraterrestrials exist, which means that the UAPs or UFOs also exist, then the next obvious question is, how have the extraterrestrials been trying to work with various human groups? Now, some ETs, the ones who we at Farsight call the bad ETs, have been working with the United States government in exchange for technological assistance with reverse engineering crashed UFO tech. But what those extraterrestrials have been doing in exchange for giving that assistance is really, really nasty. The ETs who we work with are called the good ETs, and they are trying to free this planet by ending censorship and secrecy entirely. If you know the truth, you will be free. So you can watch our monthly ET board meetings to see what the good ETs are doing to help accomplish this. Each month, right here on farsightprime.com. Now, please understand that there are limits to what we can publish on YouTube, especially in the current highly polarized and cancel culture environment that we live in today. So watch our ET board meetings on farsightprime.com. Now, remember that we are now offering captions in multiple languages for many of our videos on farsightprime.com. We are also adding captions to older videos as quickly as we can. Please be patient as we seek to catch up. So English is not a limitation on farsightprime.com. 
It is only because of advances in AI technology that we are able to offer such captions in multiple languages. So we are grateful for that. Remember also that we have a huge instructional and educational effort here at Farsight. We have people teaching our version of remote viewing and we offer lots of instructional videos on farsightprime.com plus printed materials and other resources on farsight.org. We are also listing our Farsight certified instructors who are teaching these classes and the list will grow as more people obtain certification. The Farsight instructors are doing this on their own. Farsight does not get any financial benefit from their activities. So start by going to our website, farsight.org, and near the top of the navigation bar on the left, you will see a link for remote viewing courses. Farsight is totally transparent. Farsight is first class from top to bottom. So when you follow our stuff, you are engaging with the best. To keep up with what we do at Farsight, start by subscribing to our YouTube channel and remember to click on the notifications bell that appears after you subscribe. That is the only way YouTube will notify you of the new events, especially our live stream events. Just subscribing doesn't do anything. The notifications bell is the important part but that only notifies you of things that we release on YouTube. To be notified about the things that we release on farsightprime.com, which you can watch using our Apple and Android apps on the web and on your home TV, you need to subscribe to our free email newsletter found on our website at farsight.org. You can also allow our apps to notify you of our new releases on farsightprime.com. The links for YouTube and our newsletter are in the description area below this video. And the app, well, that's on your phone. Those are how we announce what we do. And we never send out spam, and we never give our subscriber list to anyone else for any purpose. Well, that is it for this week at Farsight. Each week, we will bring you the latest. Stick with us in these changing times, and we will always stick with you. What you get from Farsight, you can get absolutely nowhere else. Stay ahead of the curve. Let the mainstream fade in the dust. Be there now. I'm Courtney Brown, director of Farsight.